Hello Abdi, I wonder if you can help. I'm looking for folk to send Jill McWilliam, the instigator of Doric TV, a wee video clip of her own favourite Doric phrase. Now this is to keep the presence of the language alive and to build up a directory. So no matter fit your age, background or interest, Doric TV would love to hear you speaking your favourite phrases or to share your stories. We don't want Doric to become diluted or to disappear altogether, so any support you can give would be affa appreciated. Now here's in of my favourite phrases for the brooms. There's nothing more embarrassing than realising you've got a clarty bonnet on just before you meet the Queen. Tangerio. Well, thank you to Evelyn Glennie for that wee cry out to all you Doric speakers out there. Now, Doric TV, as you can, is only run by myself, so, you know, it's getting more incredibly difficult in this uh, new variant that we're in with the COVID and I'm still in shielding with my partner, who's got a very low immune system. So I'm dependent on you now to come to me. Um, Evelyn just sent me a wee video of herself. You just heard her speaking. She emailed that wee video that she did on her phone. And I've uploaded it and I've turned it round for everybody else to see. So that's what I'm waiting for you to come on board now. Let us hear from you, okay? So send in your wee video clip of your most um, favourite Doric expression or a wee favourite Doric story. And I'm from the, coming for the time that it, uh, you remembered it from to email jill at doricfuture.co.uk. Look forward to hearing from you. And one of my biggest misses at the moment is to be able to get out and interview folk. That is just my forty. <laughs> anyway, um, a good, good few months ago, before this latest variant came around, but I had an occasion to visit Ellen, um, and I interviewed a chap called Cummy Fraser. Now he is quite an incredible man. If you listen to how old he is and his extensive um, vocabulary in Doric, he, this is the kind of folk that I want to interview in the future. So look out for some more Cummy Frasers for me, please do. Um, Cummy was a farm worker um, in his early days and then he, began, he then went on to own his own farm. So let's hear for Cummy. I've been speaking to Doric all my life for, for, for 92 years. And when I was alone at school, we spoke to all languages, even when we was inside the school, and a different even when we was outside. I, uh, a, a lot of the old expressions that my granny and grandfather would have used died out when the horse got out of fashion for, for working affairs. I fell left the school at 14, I, I got debated in a fair in a, in a charmer and slept in a calf bed. Calf being a chaff, it came off the oats when it was thrust out with the barn mill. Uh, the, the charmer was a, a part of the firm outbuildings and we lived there and the farmer's wife paid us in the farm kitchen. The charmer was a fairly basic kind of place to, to bide, uh, a wear cement floor we a built-in bed and you just slept with the whoever else was working with you and there was a fireplace that the fire was never on or evening. At the time I didn't think a lot about it but when I look back at it, it must have been called a lot of the time. Uh, when I started to work all the crap was caught with a binder and, and set up in stooks to start with to dry and so they stood there for maybe 10 days a fortnight something like that and then they were carried into the horse fork it onto the horse and carried, and carried it into the stockyard and built up into, into rocks we called them rocks in this part of the world and you thought he was a fair chill if you managed to the main rock builder. The, the oats was all caught with a binder and 
the shave is set up in stocks, st a stock with usually 10 shaves set. You want it to end of the stock to the point in south so that the sun got both sides out to dry. And they sat there for about a fortnight and then they were fork at the end of the kit and get at the corn yard and we get down to rocks after that. And yeah. the, the horseman, during the winter when the horse was in the stable, he would have been up there about half past five in the morning to feed his horse and mock him out and groom. And then he get him to his breakfast and came back and they were ready to the yolk at uh, like seven o'clock and uh, had to put in a four and a half hours morning until half past eleven and come back to the stable with him and the horse was to feed the, and same here if you look at again at one o'clock until half past five and he was finished about six and the horse was fed about five times a day, but the, the men was only fed three times. The, the horses were a bit more important than, than for the men were. In the eyes of the farmer? Well, as far as the farmer was concerned, the horse was more important than the man. With the modern day mechanisation, the farm workers are just there on their own. When, when I was a young loan, we learned things just working along with all our men and I can tell you if you were doing a big heat if they could keep you bring you down to size and I, th I think we learned a lot just by working alongside him I'm sure that was a good thing for our time using the Dorak for the last 92 years and I just hope it 92 years far on it'll still be somebody more reason to use it well, the farming industry in the Doric community, in which a comedy the art describes in little snippets, it's the heart and the soul of the Doric language and culture. Think about further, it wasn't just the farming and the fishing industries that made up Doric, the Doric language. There was a host of other industries and peoples in the hill of Aberdeenshire. There was shipbuilding. There was granite, the great granite, the great granite city, Aberdeen and Aberdeenshire, famous for its granite. And there was uh, paper mills, Donside paper mills, and these are just a few to speak of. And you can, their way of life, their ways of life, their language that they used to uh, describe how they worked and how they lived is, is gone. But what hasn't gone is the spirit of Doric. It's in our DNA. It's in our nature and it's in our heart. Well, I was just reflecting back on this last two years. You know, two years ago I had a job, nine to five, I was working and a routine was was uh, very good for my condition. Um, since then, um, I found life took a oh, topsy-turvy run about, helter-skelter. And um, lo and behold, I, what if I do? Creativity came to the fore and I um, created this Doric TV. Um, but every day, and especially now with this new variant and uh, further into shielding again and again, I think, you know, we need to set, set ourselves some challenges. And one challenge I thought was, well, well we're good walkers. What about deep walking or five hells in five days? Hmm. Well, as I mentioned earlier, um, I have a bipolar condition. I have a lot of my life been bothered with um, really deep depressions. It has been a, a good thing to cope with. Today, we're tackling it one step at a time. And actually, we're not going up a hill, we're going up a bray. That's maybe one way to look at it. <laughs> we're going to achy bray. By the way, a bray is a name for a little hell. Iggy, Bray, Stone Circle. Well, I've been here many a time. I just love these Mucklesteins, big stones. 
they always draw me back because of their significance and whatever the theories are, my thought really is that they were erected here probably about 4,000 years ago by basic farmers. You know why? They wanted to leave their mark. This is one of the reasons I suppose I'm doing these videos is so that I can leave my mark and hopefully in 4,000 years time, ping on, somebody will be pressing a button and will be learning about me. Just as I wonder about the basic people and how they lived 4,000 years ago, what we can learn from them and what in 4,000 years folk can learn from us. You know, one thing that always crosses my mind is about surviving and survival. You know, 4,000 years ago, there was a very basic way of surviving and they had to, they had to do it. They had to live off the land, to fish for the seas. Now, it is, I think survival is more about emotional, mental survival. How do we survive the rat race that we're in? Yeah, and I think during this pandemic that we're going through, it helped, you know, it stopped many folk in our tracks, like myself, and think, well, you know, what is survival? What is survival? You know, how can we survive mentally in these times? And this is the challenge that I'm setting myself. During the pandemic, this has been our saving grace. Walking in quiet woodland places. Well, as well as the pandemic and our own personal battles that we're facing at this period of time, there was a storm here in the northeast of Scotland and many thousands of trees were uprooted. Well, this is the site of Icky Fair. Once indeed, it was a very famous fair where people came from all over to sell their horses and barter. And before we tackle the big hulls in life, we've got to just take one step at a little time. Just try the little braise first.